that's a really interesting. There's like so much to say on like electoral college and stuff. I mean, my first, my first instant, my the first thought I have in thinking of that, like sort of sort of free association, would be sort of Rome's sort of the um, uh, centurion assembly, right? And how those uh, the, centru- the the bodies voted there, right? And how in many ways we talk about it was rigged, right? Um, right, the senatorial class, right, the patricians ran the tables in that. It was designed to to happen that way, right? And so we think about how, uh, and that's. I'm not making a judgment on that. I'm just saying that's the way it was designed. It's important to understand that, right? And then that can help us understand how plebeians reacted to that at various times, seceding, right? Um, but that could also help us understand, you know, uh, the founders of this country and how they look to that model, right? They look to sort of uh, distilling the vote through other people, right? So uh, they were scared of the popular vote in some ways. The popular vote is direct democracy. That's Athens, that's scary to the founding, you know, to Jefferson, to even Hamilton. I mean, these sort of opposing view, you know, two figures that looked at each other in very opposite ways um, and are found both important, they wrote important texts uh, that we still cite in both, po- you know, politics now and cite sort of historically. So I think that, you, you, you know, they, they looked at trying to distill that vote, right? In many, the same ways that Rome distilled the vote, right? And tried to control sort of popular will. Uh, in, in some way. So I think that that's, I mean, incredibly, you know, insightful and relevant and important to see that, you know, we maybe, I think in contemporary politics, people talk about the way American small d democracy functions, right? And how it's like not functioning, right? We think of our system is like broken, but as I like to tell my students, it's actually functioning exactly the way our founders intended. You just disagree with the way that it's functioning. And I think looking at Rome and Athens and all of these examples from, from antiquity help us understand systems, you know, sort of political systems, how they're set up, who sets them up, why they're set up that way, and how people have always struggled to change them, to make them more egalitarian, have more people have a say in that power. And so I think that that's, you know, along, there's, you know, 2,000 years of history trying to promote that and push that agenda. So I think that that's um, incredibly insightful for students and I think validating for them if they have their own, you know, teaching, high, uh, even high school, but really teaching sort of like uh, college age students, they are incredibly idealistic, right? So, and sometimes older people view that as a negative, but I think you can, that's another window into antiquity for them, right? Which was all about ideas, right? It was a battle of ideas, so in some ways. So I think that for them to see that that's okay discourse to have, right? Is I think incredibly like validating and enriching for them in the classroom. They think, oh yeah, like I wanna learn more about this. So I think it's a real draw for them into antiquity 